What's going on everybody? This is Bob from Lone Duck Outfitters in Kennels. This is sweet girl Andy. She is going to help me talk to you about collar conditioning. So we get a lot of questions on our Instagram for our podcast about collar conditioning your dog. Uh, we hear it all. My dog is too soft for collar conditioning. I've never collar conditioned before. Collars are bad. And I'd like to A, teach you a few things and dispel some myths and show you how to start around not show you, but let's talk it out, talk it out, okay? So this is, I don't know what we're gonna name this, but this is the first of the Couch Diaries. No, I don't like that. We used to do Ask Lone Duck, so maybe we'll go back to that. But anyways, collar conditioning. Now, on our recent episode of Lone Duck's Gun Dog Chronicles podcast, we had the pterodactyl Kaka Blaine Tarnecki from Hudson River Retrievers. He's a good friend of mine, awesome dog trainer, and he and I and Kevin BS'd. Oh, she's eating her foot. We BS'd about collar conditioning. It is a difficult process. People are nervous about doing it, so I'm hoping this video helps you. Now, real quick. Do me a solid. If you enjoy this video, click subscribe. Just do it. Click it. Thank you for doing it. I appreciate it. Um, number two, if you've got dog training questions and you're just finding me now, go to your podcast app and, and check out Lone Duck's Gun Dog Chronicles. All right. Collar conditioning. Now, here's what we do. I'm a big proponent of Dogtra. We sell them. We use them. I've used them for over 10 years and I've never really had a problem. They, their customer service is fantastic, the collars are fantastic, and here's why. When I give a collar correction or stimulation, the key is that it's timely and it's at the level that I've chosen. So if it's a 1 or a 20 or a 50, I need that stimulation to be a 1, a 20, or a 50. Some collars, you know, if you, if you try and go budget, and save a little bit of dough, some of those collars are gonna be almost on the fritz, if you will. They'll be a 20 where you got it, but then you nick the dog on a 20 and they'll, yep, and, and it's just inconsistent would be the word. Our job with training is consistency in so many aspects, but that consistency of the collar is key and the timely. When I push that button, it's gotta work no matter what distance, no matter what they're doing, if I'm ready and willing to push that button, it's got to work and I got to know it works. So that's why we choose Dogtra. So anyways, let's just say you decide to buy a Dogtra. Here we go. You pull it out of the package. Day one, strap that sucker on the dog. Now, what age do we collar condition? For us, professional dog trainers, we do six months. So if you send me your six month old puppy, I'm going to teach that dog some stuff. Sit coming when they're called, walking nicely on a leash, all using treats and a leash. Then I'm gonna put the collar on the dog and let them wear it around. Let them get used to it for a day or two. No biggie, they're not gonna worry about it, it's just a collar. And then I'm gonna start collar conditioning. Now here's where the pterodactyl, caca, Blaine Tarnecki and I had a little bit of a, not disagreement, but he does it a little different. So he starts with sit. He collar conditions the dog to sit first. I do here. Now, maybe I'll, switch to the pterodactyl because if I've learned anything from him, he's never wrong. And he's going to appreciate this video of me saying that. But I do here because when I get a dog in for training, the number one thing that they don't do is come to me. So I've got to teach them to come when they're called. But his point about collar conditioning sit first is that it's the number one thing that you teach a puppy. You take a treat and you got that eight week old puppy sitting back sitting nicely and you give them a treat. And at eight weeks old, they've learned this word and an action gets a response from us, positive reinforcement, right? So he's like, no, it's just, they already know sit, it's pretty quick, so let's collar condition sit. So go ahead, Andy, go do your thing. Um, sit. So we use continuous stimulation when we give the command. So let's say these, now let me back up, I'm sorry. The collar is to teach and reinforce known commands. So it's almost like a polishing tool. So if the dog already knows sit, I've already taught sit, I know it's being, it, it, the dog knows what I'm asking it, then 
the sit command, when you overlay the collar, it's going to understand. So it might feel something funny, but it's going to understand what you're asking. You've got the leash on the dog. You've got them at heel. They understand what sit means. And are you going to come back up here? No. Now, that's a big point I want to touch on. So sit. I've got a leash on the dog. They're not just running around willy-nilly like Andy is, getting pet by Kevin behind the camera. We've got control over the dog. I've got my collar uh, remote in my hand, and I've got control over the dog, and I start very low. So I start, let's say you've got the dog to 1900 S. That's got a dial that goes zero to 127. I'm gonna start at like a 10. A 10, I know the dog doesn't feel it, basically. Then I'm gonna dial it up a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, until I see the dog physically react. They're going to start to feel it. And it's weird to them. They don't know what it feels like. They don't understand what this is. And so I'm going to give continuous stimulation at a very low level, lift up on the leash, tell them sit, butt hits the ground, relax the leash, turn the pressure off on the collar, turn that stimulation off, and praise. Uncomfortable, comfortable, and praise, okay? That's, that's what we're teaching this dog. So then I walk a little further, sit, lift up on the leash, stimulation, butt hits the ground, turn all the pressure off and praise. If they sit their butt or they pick their butt up, immediately go back. And you start scaling that collar, uh, the level up to find where they're a little bit uncomfortable and you work them through it and then you scale back down and you scale back up and you scale back down and you find what I call the normal working level. So again, maybe your dog is soft and their normal working level is a 20 uh, out of 127. Maybe your dog's a 55, maybe your dog's a 70. That's their normal working level. That's the threshold where you can, they can be relaxed, you touch that collar, they react in a positive way, they change their behavior, they comply with the command quickly, and that's your normal working level. We can scale it up due to infractions, or we can scale it back down, right? So that's sit. Now, the next thing that I actually do first, but the pterodactyl does second, is hear. So the hear command, when I collar condition is, I will either have a helper hang onto the dog, I've got a check cord on the dog, a 25 foot check cord, Hold, the guy, my buddy, is holding the dog. I go to the end of the check cord, and I've got the rope. I've always got control of the dog. And I'm going to say, Andy, here. And I'm going to give continuous, low-level stimulation and basically pull the dog in, reel them in, baby. Reel them in. When they get to me, the collar's turned off. They get praise. And so they understand uncomfortable, comfortable, and praise. So if they hustle up to me and get to me, the collar's turned off and they get praised. So it's a win. They, we want them to win. So that collar gets turned off, okay? So the idea with collar conditioning is it's not a punishment tool. It's a refining tool for commands we've already taught. We've done treat training getting them to come to us. We've done leash work where they sit and they come to us and they walk decent on a leash. Now we're using that sandpaper and and fine tuning and, and honing their skill set. And then it gives us the, the, the skill set to actually take them off leash and, and hold them to a high standard. And then when you do advanced training, whistle sets and blind retrieves and de cheating and, you know, for you, you pointer folks, woeing a dog or belly band, this dog understands that this thing on its neck is not a negative. It's a training tool, it's a device that helps us teach the dog and build upon the skill set that the leash and treats have started for us. So anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Collar conditioning is not something to be afraid of. No dog is too soft. You have to teach the dog, find their normal working level on that e-collar. And as always, if you run into a, a little roadblock, Shoot me a DM on the Instagrams, at Lone Duck. Tune into at Lone Duck's Gun Dog Chronicles on podcasts. And again, click that subscribe. Thank you.